What's up, book nerds? Welcome to my channel. I am so excited to start this journey with you guys. I've been thinking about starting a booktube for months and months. I thought, what better than to do my very favorite series of all time, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. I just saw Haley's comments you were do not want any spoilers i would recommend maybe stopping here and if you've already read these books well you already know how great they are and i hope you stay on to hear all of what i have to say about them i'm gonna start by showing the map of rithian so this is rithian and Feyre, she's the main character she is a human in this book that's kind of a setup for later books but she lives below the wall, and then it goes to the Spring Court, whose High Lord is Tamlin, and he is a shapeshifter. He can shapeshift into a wolf. And then it's the Autumn Court, and that High Lord is Baron. Their power is Fire. The Summer Court, their High Lord is Tarquin. Tarkin? I'm a bad pronouncer of names, so during this talk, if I get a ton of them wrong, or if you think they're pronounced differently, they probably are. They have powers, all things to do with water. Then we go to the Winter Court, and that High Lord is Callius, and of course, everything with snow and ice, that's their power. Then it's under the mountain, and kind of like the middle, it's called later, which is where Amaratha, a crony to the King of Highborn, she resides under the mountain. Then it is the Dawn Court, who Thesin rules over, and then Day Court, where helion resides over and he can break all like spells wards chains he's very intelligent that sort of thing and then it's the night court and that's where resan the love of my life resides over and think like night court dark he can winnow which means like disappear in one place and show up in another he's gorgeous that's yeah in this book we don't like him but later on we do that's kind of Rithian. As I said, the King of Hybern's over here, Mortal Lands, kind of more fairy realms. And there are queens over there, but they're not really relevant in this book either. This book starts off with Feyre Archeron, and she is a human. As I said, she lives below the wall. She has two older sisters, Elaine and Nesta. Elaine is kind of, think, pretty, calm, like gardener, that sort of thing. And then Nesta is the complete opposite. She's also gorgeous, but she's more stern all sharp edges blunt not wicked but she's very cold that's that's the right word their father was a merchant and he was super rich all of his ships got lost out at sea and the whole family went broke the book really starts when Feyre kills a wolf who she knows is a fairy but she does it anyway because she hates fairies she's heard terrible stories about them hurting humans killing humans using humans she hates fairies most mortals do she kills the fairy. This is part of this bigger curse going on. So Tamlin, the High Lord of Spring, shows up in wolf form and tears down the cottage door and storms in there and demands that Feyre come with him to the Spring Court. Otherwise, she can die. So she gets taken by Tamlin to the Spring Court. Tamlin hates her. She hates him. Everybody hates each other, but Tamlin starts courting her anyway. Backstory, Amaratha is under the mountain. And she, at the moment, and for the past 50 years, has held all the High Lords in Rithian captive. Except for Tamlin, if he can make a human who absolutely hates him, who hates fairies, fall in love with him, then it will break the curse from under the mountain and everybody will be released. So how Tamlin courts her is he starts showing around spring court. It's beautiful, of course. It's always in spring, always blooming, always smells like flowers. Feyre loves painting, so Tamlin gets her all the paint supplies in the world in a beautiful room to start painting again. Lucian is from the Autumn Court. He's actually a prince of Autumn, and he is Tamlin's best friend, right hand, becomes Feyre's friend as well, and that's kind of how it starts. It really changes during Cal and Mai. There are a bunch of bonfires on a hill and Tamlin's expected to kind of have sex with someone. But of course he likes Feyre now and he knows it's not safe for her. She's immortal. There's going to be lots of fairies there. 
But she ends up going, and that is where she first meets Reese, the High Lord of the Night Court. That night comes to pass, and in the morning, Tamlin sees Feyre and is like, I told you to stay in your room, but I got your scent and it drove me crazy, like all I wanted was you. Reese makes another visit. He finds out that Feyre is glamored right under his nose and freaks out because Reese was having glimpses of Feyre while he was under the mountain and it was like the one good thing and he thought she was just at Kalanmai because she was immortal and that she just crossed the wall and she was going back and like Tamlin had no control. Reese flips out, he tells Tamlin that he's gonna tell Amaratha he has this girl who can break the curse. Tamlin decides to send Feyre home because she hasn't admitted to loving him. Tamlin goes back to under the mountain and they're all trapped and they think they'll be trapped forever. But Feyre shows up under the mountain unannounced, everyone freaks out, Tailman's unhappy about it, Reese is unhappy, they're all unhappy because they just wanted Feyre to be safe, but she wants to save Tamlin because she does love him. So she pronounces her love, but Amaratha says, it's too late, so sorry, we're just gonna have to kill you. But because Amaratha loves the show, she decides to give Feyre a riddle, and if she can figure the riddle out, the curse is automatically broken, or three tasks to complete. And then the curse will be broken, but not right away. The first one, she was up against a midden guard worm. She got dropped into the lair and she ended up killing the worm. The only person who thought she could was Reese. The second task, she had to solve a riddle for practice for the one that she was already given. And she got dropped into a pit. Lucian was also there and spikes were gonna impale them both. It was closing up on them and she had to choose one of three lovers correctly and Every time she went towards the first and second lover, her hands burned, but the third one, it was always okay, so she ended up pulling it and won. It was actually Reese who kept helping her. The third and final task was for Feyre to kill three fairies. The irony in the whole thing was that she didn't care before, she hated fairies, but now because she loved Tamlin and Lucian and she realized fairies weren't that bad, she did not want to kill them, but she ended up doing it. And after she killed them, Amaratha decided to start like hurting her and said, well, I don't have to break the curse right now, haha, ha, I tricked you. Feyre, in that moment, solves the riddle. The riddle was love. All of them are broken from the curse. Tamlin attacks Amaratha. Amaratha snaps Feyre's neck. Feyre's dying, but she holds on. And Reese slips into all the High Lord's minds and tells them, hey, go give her a drop of your power if all seven of us High Lords do that, she will be saved. Feyre is reborn as a fairy. So in the end, Reese visits Feyre right before her and Tamlin leave under the mountain, and he kind of is shocked and has an epiphany and leaves right away. We don't know what that is in this book, but it's coming up. Tamlin proposes, they're now gonna get married, everything's okay, but Feyre is not okay. I honestly can't even read this book anymore because of how much I hate Tamlin after reading the whole series and how much I love Reese and Feyre together, so just seeing Feyre with someone else is like wrong in a way, and I can't stay in it. So I do love this book, it's a great intro to the series, but I don't read it as much as the other ones. The second book in the series is called A Court of Mist and Fury, and this starts off with Feyre in the spring court. She's preparing for her wedding. She's getting help by this priestess named Ianthe. Ianthe? Leading up to her wedding, Feyre keeps asking Tamlin for things to do because she is haunted by what she had to do under the mountain, as in killing three fairies. She's just haunted by everything she did there, and she can't sleep through the night, she can't keep anything down, so she just wants something to do, something to get her mind off of it. And Tamlin, being the control freak that he is, will not let her do anything, won't let her leave his manner without someone or a bunch of people watching her and she just feels like she's suffocating. That's all happening leading up to the wedding day and as she's walking in the aisle in this huge spring ridiculous princess gown she like freaks out. She has a panic attack and she's like somebody please help me. In that moment Reese shows up because Feyre was like shouting in her mind for someone to help her and Backstory, Reese and Feyre made a bargain under the mountain for 
Feyre to visit him or be with him two weeks out of every month, forever. Reese shows up in that moment to start the bargain. Everyone freaks out, Tamlin's so mad, but Reese is the most powerful High Lord in Rithian, so no one can really do anything. And Feyre is taken by Reese back to the Night Court. At first, Feyre's mad and Reese is like, you literally begged for someone to help you. I just did what you wanted. In that two weeks, Feyre starts to eat a little bit more. Reese starts to teach her how to read and write. There's a lot of bantering going on, but that's kind of their relationship. It's how it was under the mountain. So it's kind of what they do. And after the two weeks is up, Reese brings her back to the spring court. Tamlin's upset. He wants to break the bargain trying to figure it out, it comes to a crashing point when Tamlin decides to lock her up in the manor, in the spring court. He is so obsessed with keeping her safe that he isn't listening to her and he locks her up. She freaks out and Reese ends up breaking the wards. Moore comes in, takes her because Reese couldn't, otherwise it was grounds for war. Feyre kind of decides she's done with Tamlin. Normally, in the two weeks that she was visiting the night court, he would be gone most of the day doing who knows what. He wouldn't tell Feyre because Feyre was Tamlin's. So now that she wasn't, Feyre was just begged, please, can you take me with you? Reese is like, yes, but you have to promise me you won't tell anyone. Like, this is my life. This is my world. This is what I love. If you tell an enemy, it could all be gone. So the night court, everybody, there's like a facade. Everybody thinks it's the Court of Nightmares, which is ruled by Moore's father. It's not. Reese resides in Valeris. He's not cruel, like the mask he puts on for everyone. All the other High Lords thinks he's awful. Feyre thought he was awful, but he's actually not. He chose to trust her and brought her to the city of Valeris. As I already touched, Moore's the one who saved her, and she is Reese's cousin. She's blonde, beautiful. Moore's father sold her to the Autumn Court to the prince, Eris. Moore ended up having sex with somebody else to like defile her sort of, and she was tossed out. Reese's second, Amryn, she's not a fairy. She is something other. She's of another world. She's stronger, and she's Reese's second, and she's kind of small, dark, very wicked. Everybody's scared of her, including Reese, who is the most powerful High Lord in Rithian. So, that's who Amran is. And then it's Cassian and Azriel. Azriel. I call him Cass and Az. Cassian is the war general. He is an Illyrian. They all are. Reese is an Illyrian. Az is Illyrian, um, which means they all have wings. They all are very good at fighting, all that. Cassian, Illyrian, war general, big, brute, long hair. He's beautiful. He's muscular. That. Then there's Azriel or Az, he is like gorgeous, probably the most gorgeous of them. Kind of more feminine, like he's not feminine, but he just like has like long eyelashes, great cheekbones, the sort of things every girl wants, he has. And he is kind of the shadow singer, that's what he's called. He's Reese's spy. There is a love triangle between Cassian, Azriel, and Moore. Az loves Moore, Moore had sex with Cassian, that's who like defiled her. Cassian had sex with her, loves her too, but it's more like a brotherly and sisterly love now. Like, yeah, they had sex, but it was only one time, it's in the past. Azriel loves more, more does not love either of them. We'll find out why later on, but that's kind of the love triangle. That is his inner circle. He loves them all dearly. He's grown up with them all. He trusts them all. He's different with them all. He has no mask on. He is a good person with them. And in Valeris, nobody knows about Valeris. Feyre goes there and meets all of them. Feyre starts training with them all. Her job in the court now is to like be the spokesperson for the human lands. And the first thing Feyre really does is visit the bone carver in the prison. And the prison is also in the night court and that's where Amran was locked away. That's where all the evil creatures are locked away and Amran is the only one who's ever been able to get out and it's because she trapped herself in a fairy body. So that's why Amran is with them and Feyre goes to talk to the carver about the cauldron, which is what the King of Highburn is using to possibly hurt the human lands. Then Reese is kind of testing Feyre 
because she was made and the cauldron makes things, is made, is of a different power. So Reese is kind of testing Farrah and wants to know if she can detect made objects. So later on, she can detect the cauldron. And so he brings her to the middle and says, go into the weaver's hut who kills everyone. And then she takes their beauty and then weaves their hair. That's why she's called the weaver, very disgusting. Feyre goes in there, doesn't know what Rhysand wants, but ends up detecting a ring, grabs it, makes the weaver really mad, scurries up the chimney, and gets out. Furious at Reese because she almost died and throws the ring at him. She has no idea why he wants it. Wants it. It was his mother's ring, so I'm sure you know why. So the next thing Feyre does is go and visit her sisters and the human queens. Her sisters are now once again rich. Tamlin, after taking Feyre in the first book, sent money to them and they now are back in an uh, estate and all good. They have servants again, very rich. So Feyre goes to talk to them. They all hate fairies, mostly all mortals do because they've only ever heard bad stories. So they're in shock that Feyre is a fairy and it takes them a little while to trust her again. But Feyre needs to talk to the human queens because they're trying to get a book. There's two halves. And they're trying to get this book so that they can nullify the cauldron and basically stop the King of Highburn. Elaine and Nesta are working on getting that half from the queens. And the other half is in the summer court with Tarquin. Feyre, Reese, and Amran all go to the summer court to find out where the other half of the book is and then they're gonna steal it. So after Feyre kind of flirts with Tarquin, the High Lord. There's a lot of jealousy going on from both Feyre and Reese when they talk to anybody else. Um, so you can totally tell that they're starting to fall for each other. And I'm here for it. Everyone's here for it who's read this series. It's amazing. And they end up kind of wooing Tarquin and then right up from under his nose, they end up stealing the first half of the book and then going back to the Night Court. And Tarquin is obviously very upset about this and sends them all blood rubies, which Amran loves. She loves diamonds and loves death and blood. That's all she eats. Side note, she's basically a vampire. So they're basically the Summer Court's enemies now, which Resand and Feyre are very unhappy about because Tarquin is actually a very good High Lord. Then they have another meeting with the Queens in Nesta and Elaine's estate in the mortal realm. And the queens don't really believe that Reese is of word that he has their like lives in his best interest. They need proof that he is good. To get this, they need to go to the Court of Nightmares and steal a orb. The orb can put an image in it or a place in real time. And Reese decides he needs to show the queens Valeris and all the good people that live there and how he is not a terrible person. So they go to the Court of Nightmares, they're all wicked, um, Thera sits on his lap and plays kind of the whore because that's what most of Rithian sees her as now because she did go from one High Lord to another. There is a lot of um, intimacy going on while Thera sits on Reese's lap. You can totally tell they're into each other. Even if their minds say they're not, Thera and Reese's bodies react to each other because they want each other. It's so good. It's the longest night of the year in all of Rithian. It's called Starfall. So there are stars, which are actually like spirits um, traveling this one night, kind of like shooting stars. Basically the same thing, but more vivid, more beautiful, closer to you. And this night also, Feyre and Reese are alone on the patio. That's when the star hits her in the face and they fall for each other even more. From there, Reese gives the orb with Valeris to the queens, and what do the queens do? They betray him. Valeris is attacked, Feyre defends the city, the Aider comes, who is this awful, wicked creature, and she kills him by winnowing on top of him in the sky and stabbing him. They get it taken care of pretty quickly, but it's still... Valeris has never been attacked, and the people there are not fighters. Cassian as Moore, Amran, and Reese, and Feyre are the ones to defend the city. From there, Feyre and Reese are training in the woods, and they start to kind of get more intimate. They start to kiss, and Feyre, one night while they're staying in this like rundown inn, 
is like, I just need someone for fun. Like Tamlin broke me. She's already said she no longer loves Tamlin, Therese. She knows that and she doesn't. She loved him when she needed a protector, but now she was strong and growing. She was keeping food down. Reese was helping her grow and she was helping Reese grow and they were both growing together, getting out of all the wicked things that they've seen and done. Feyre just wants a distraction and Reese is gonna pretend to be that distraction. So they're kissing, they kind of do some things. They don't have sex yet, but that's kind of where they are. In the woods, Reese has been with his magic getting tracked by the King of Highburn, so he hasn't been really using magic as much. And somehow Highburn's cronies track them and shoot ash arrows through his wings. For those of you who don't know, ash arrows really hurt fairies in this book. Anything with ash does. And so Feyre decides she needs to trap the surreal, this old being who basically knows everything. And to trap him, you need a cloak. So Feyre goes out, hangs a cloak on a tree and waits. Suriel comes and tells her how to heal Rhysand and also that Rhysand and Feyre are mates. That Rhysand knew that him and Feyre were mates. And so Feyre is pissed. She releases the Suriel, goes back to Rhysand, heals him, and then as soon as he's okay to winnow, has him winnow her back to um, the Illyrian steps and goes straight to Moore because she's just pissed off and says, Mora, I need to get out of here. Take me somewhere where Rhysand cannot find me. I need to be alone and think about what I just learned. And so Mora winnows her to this cabin and Feyre stays there for a few days. And she's just thinking like, I can't believe he didn't tell me. I'm so mad. But she realizes she loves him and she would love to be his mate. And he ends up showing up. They end up having world freaking rocking sex. <laughs> For like a long time many times and then the last part of the book they have both halves of the book now Amarin is the one who's been reading it and deciphering it and they decide to go to Highburn to nullify the cauldron and Feyre's the ticket to this she needs to touch the cauldron and say the spell within the book that Amarin has translated Feyre touches the cauldron but it's kind of a trap it doesn't work she can't nullify it and the King of Highburn is ready. Tamlin and Lucine are there. Tamlin has sold out himself to the King of Highburn, kind of allianced himself so that he could get Feyre back. Nesta and Elaine show up. The King of Highburn throw them into the cauldron. Both of them are made into fairies. Elaine is given a gift. She goes first. She's given a gift. We'll find out what that is later. And Nesta takes a gift. Also, we'll find out what those are later in the different books. And then everything's going to shit, basically. Cassian is hurt. He can't help Nesta. Side note, Nesta and Cassian. Yep. Lucian realizes that Elaine is his mate. Lucian wants to take Elaine. Feyre's like, no, and they all need to get out of there. But the King of Highburn has them all trapped. They can't get out. So Feyre asks for him to break the bargain between her and Reese. They kind of concealed their whole mating bond. The King of Highburn breaks this bargain. Feyre acts like it breaks everything. She doesn't know Reese. He's put her under this spell that she still loves Tamlin. Tamlin, take me home. Little did they know that when the King of Highburn broke the bargain, Feyre actually broke all the wards that held them there. In that moment, she tells them all, like, get out. I'm gonna stay with Tamlin. So they all winnow away. The King of Highburn is furious but nobody understands that Feyre is the one who did it. No one realizes that Feyre and Reese are mates and maybe even more. So Tamlin and Lucian and Feyre all go back to the spring court. The King of Highburn still very much alive. They couldn't do anything to the cauldron. That's kind of that. They find out at the end of this book that Feyre is not just Reese's mate, but now wife and high lady of the night court. Go boss ass bitch. She is now going to be the spy. So this is my favorite book of the whole series, my favorite book in the entire world. I love Feyre and Reese's love story of how they like lift each other up and just are always there for each other and are perfect for each other. Some of the scenes just between Feyre and Reese are amazing and I've read them probably a hundred times, I kid you not. If I'm sad, I read a part of this book. If I'm mad, I read a part of this book. If I can't find anything to do, I read a part of this book. That's how much I love this book. Like. 
my favorite book of all time. The next book is A Court of Wings and Ruin. Feyre is in the spring court. She is the high lady of the night court. Feyre kind of sticks to herself and slowly kind of unravels the spring court from within. She goes around the towns and with the sentries and kind of makes them all doubt Tamlin and his rule. And while she is there, Ayanthi or Iante, the priestess is still there and she now hates her because she found out that Iante kind of tried to rape Resand and probably has done it to other men. And so now, of course, she hates her. Lucian is there and Lucian wants Elaine. Lucian doesn't really trust Feyre. He kind of knows something's off, but at the same time, he wants his mate, and to get his mate, it's through Feyre, so he kind of just has to pretend and sit there. The nephew and niece to the King of Highburn are there, and then Jurian. Jurian is immortal. He was kept by Amaratha for years and years in a necklace. Now he's working with the King of Highburn after Under the Mountain. They're all there, and Feyre leaves the spring court by smashing Ianthi's hand, killing the prince and princess and then lucian is there and is like take me with you i want to go back to the night court with you i want my mate elaine and they go on land and they're going through the autumn court Feyre was poisoned and so she could not winnow she was not strong enough that's why they had to travel on land they went in the autumn court and they're almost out of the autumn court but then the princes of autumn i.e lucian's brothers who hate him are there and they finally get away and escape into the winter court but Lucian's brothers follow them and they have this big fight on the ice as and Cass show up and save the day and then they all go back to the night court. They go straight to the um, townhouse in Valeris. They're all talking and then Reese shows up. Feyre like falls to the ground out of joy for finally seeing her mate and they do some stuff and Reese tells everyone to get the hell out of his house for a while because you know. So after they kind of do their thing. Feyre learns the King of Highburn offered the Queen's immortality. They all went into the cauldron, but because Elaine and Nesta, Elaine was gifted something, Nesta took something, the cauldron was mad, retaliated on the Queen's. It did not go good for them. Feyre immediately goes and sees her two sisters because they were brought back to the night court. They're at the House of Wind. Nesta is, you know, pissed off but no one really knows what her power is and she won't tell anyone elaine is fading she's very depressed very sad and nobody really knows what's going on with her but like i said the cauldron gave her a gift so that's kind of what's going on with her and i'll get into more of that later but elaine doesn't want lucian she doesn't want to be mates lucian is trying to enforce that bond and elaine wants no part of it and Feyre, after coming back starts to work on herself again fighting training she was given a drop of power by each of the high lords so now she has a kernel of all their power and so she starts training that again honing that in she can be high lady because she is as powerful as resand they're equals in every way resand is the most powerful high lord of rithian ever and now he has a wife and a high lady and a mate who is equally as powerful. So they're really a force to be reckoned with. She starts flying, getting flying lessons because she can shapeshift into sort of like an Illyrian thing with wings as is helping her train that. The next part, she goes to visit the bone carver again in the prison because they know a war is coming up and she knows she needs as many people on her side. So she decides to recruit the bone carver. The bone carver says, you know, I'll fight, but you need to bring me the Auro Boros. Again, probably saying that completely wrong, but it's a mirror and it is in the court of nightmares and that's his price. He said, get me that, I'll fight for you in the war. They all go to the court of nightmares. Reese and Feyre still kind of have on their masks. They all do, they're very cold. They ask Moore's father for his Darkbringer Legion, who is the Legion of the Court of Nightmares, to fight in the war. He says, yes, of course. Even though he's a terrible person, like he would always back Reese, he kind of has to. And Feyre asks about the Ouroboros, and Moore's father's like, yeah, sure, take it if you dare. Like, you could die, you could go crazy, not many people look into it and survive, like, sanely. They also have a meeting with Eris. They have a new alliance that goes on through the rest of the books with Eris. Baron is his father, he's a Prince of Autumn. He's going to be the next High Lord after the father. 
the father is terrible, Baron, nobody likes him, and they have an alliance with Eris, who is the one who threw out Moore. So Moore hates him, Az hates him, they all basically hate him, but it's kind of like, keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer, that sort of thing. So Nesta is now helping with the mortal realm and the cauldron. She was made, she could possibly help nullify the cauldron as well. Her and Feyre go to the library, which is a part, like kind of attached to the House of Wind, where a bunch of alkalites are. Women who have been previously either raped, abused in their past, and now they're here alone in kind of solitude with only other women. They're safe. This is their place. So Nesta and Feyre go there, and two ravens sent by the King of Hybern show up and they get past Rhysand's wards. Nesta and Feyre have to race to the bottom of the library where Bryaxis, Bryaxis, something like that, a dark being, evil, well, he's not evil. They think he's evil, but he's good in the end. But they race down to the bottom, the raven's following them. Feyre's like, I need help, I need to save my sister, I'll do anything. And he's like, I just want someone to talk to. I'm lonely down here in the dark, no one likes me, everyone thinks I'm mead. The bargain is, send me someone to talk to about anything. He doesn't say when, he doesn't say who, he just says, I need some company. So Feyre's like, deal, they make the bargain. Braxis ends up destroying the ravens and then Cassian shows up. Very excited Nesta's okay because that romance is brewing. Sees that Feyre's okay, Reese shows up. Reese takes the two ravens, they're basically dead, but not yet. Reese is pissed, Amran goes out hunting that night through the city of Valerist. She doesn't find anyone, it's all okay. It was just the two ravens and that was taken care of. So leading up to this, Elaine kept saying things about ravens coming. They realize that she is a seer, so she can basically predict the future or see into the future. And she's not crazy, she's not just depressed, like she was given a gift by the cauldron and that's what it is. So that was like a huge relief to Nesta and Feyre especially and Lucian the mate but he annoys me so no everybody is so relieved that she's not crazy she has a gift and that's what it is and now they can actually kind of try to understand her and maybe be better prepared for hibern in the future one of the things elaine has been seeing is the firebird queen which is one of the human queens the only one who is good in the end the one who gave them the half of the book the person to go find her now is lucian so lucian leaves because elaine doesn't want him he doesn't really have a part here he's kind of betraying his best friend tamlin so he's like I'll be more useful somewhere else. Send me. He goes to find this Firebird Queen. From there, they find out the Summer Court has been attacked. Amran's lover, a prince of Adrada, sends word that they're under attack. They need aid. Amran stays behind so that she can protect Valeris after they were just kind of attacked. They all go there, give their aid, help stop the Hybern attack, and Tarquin forgives them. The Blood Rubies are renounced. From there, Feyre decides, you know what, Reese? it's time we unite everyone and show them who we truly are. So from there, it's the meeting with all the High Lords of Rithian in the Dawn Court, where Feyre, like, officially says, like, hi, I'm High Lady, and everyone shows up. Tamlin is last. He's straight up pissed. He keeps making digs and glaring at Feyre and saying things that nobody likes. Nobody really trusts him because he did sell out everyone to the King of Hybern and the King of Hybern has been camping in the Spring Court, and so nobody really trusts Tamlin or knows what to do about him. Baron, the High Lord of Autumn Court, is there, and he's saying comments that nobody likes. Eris is there, and he makes jabs at Moor, and then as freaks out, attacks him. Feyre has to stop him. It's kind of hypocritical because Feyre ends up attacking Baron because Baron's making snide remarks at Reese about how Reese was Amarathus whore, which she was only a whore so that nobody would find out about Valeris and more and Amarin and Cass and As. And so Feyre freaks out, won't take it, won't allow anybody to speak disrespectfully to her man. And so she attacks Baron. Everybody sees her powers, how she is stronger than that High Lord and has everybody else's powers in the room. Baron kind of storms out of there with his entire Autumn Court crew. Everyone doesn't really mind because nobody really likes them, to be honest. So that's that. And then Tamlin is trying to persuade everyone that he's on their side. And so he hands over all of Highburn's 
like plans for the war and what's been happening within his borders. And then Thiessen has a way to stop Kyburn from using Feybane, which again is like ash arrows. It nullifies fairies powers and everything kind of makes them sluggish one of his master tinkers has found an antidote of a sort and says everyone can take it she'll make enough for everyone and reese is very thankful for that and then of course everyone is allowed to stay the night and everyone does except for the autumn court who's already left during that stay Feyre has a freaking great discovery because she's freaking a genius she realizes helian is lucian's father lucian is not a son of baron he is the son of baron's wife and helian they had an affair that's who lucian is that's why lucian is hated by his father and everyone in the autumn court and then Helian and Moore have sex that night as well because she doesn't want As in love with her because she doesn't love him so she decides to have sex with someone else like right in his face basically so a little rude in my opinion while they're still staying Nesta feels off she gets Cassian Cassian's like why do you feel off what's going on everyone doesn't know the king of Highburn used the cauldron to shatter the wall the safety of the mortal realms everyone disperses then all the high lords go back and they're like, okay, war has begun. Feyre immediately goes and talks to Bryaxis in the bottom of the library and says, hey, I'm recruiting you to fight as well. What do you want? And he's like, I want a window. This guy just wants a companion in a window. Weird. Well, he's not really a guy. He's more like of a demon, a good demon, sort of. But yeah, everybody's freaking out. Like, what do we do about all the mortals? Like, how do we keep them safe? Hybron's like now gonna attack. They have no safety. The wall's gone. And Elaine suggests she goes and talks to her ex-fiance, who is a human who broke up with her because she's now fairy. Grayson, and he has a huge estate and he's ready for this. Like he's prepared, he hates fairies. And so Elaine's like, let me go talk to him. Maybe he'll help some humans, let them take sanctuary with him. So they all go there and talk to him. Jurian shows up, who they all thought was in with the king. Little they know that Jurian hates the king, is here for the humans, wants an alliance with Rhys, wants to destroy Hybern and help Rithian. Then Hybern starts marching on summer. The Lyrian legions stop them, but it was just a distraction. They're actually going to winter. They have to kind of put up a glamour in a sort to say like, oh, our army's here, but they actually race to winter. But when they get to winter, they realize, oh, this isn't his entire army either. And Feyre's like, well, how can we figure this out? So she goes and finds the cereal again. She finds out their true army is near her family's a state in the human world and she's freaking out and then Ianthe shows up in the woods very pissed off that Feyre broke her hand and she has a few other like guards with her they end up shooting the cereal Feyre ends up running leads Ianthe right to the weaver's cottage because they're in the middle the weaver loves it because Ianthe is a beautiful priestess Feyre tricks her locks her in with the weaver obviously she dies Feyre goes back to the Cyril and tries to save him, but it, he's too far gone. He's dying. Um, it's very sad. I've cried. Um, even though he's like a demon, he's a good demon and he likes Feyre, so I like him. Helian shows up, burns the body, and brings Feyre back to Reese. Because Nesta was made by the cauldron, she's the one who ends up finding the exact location of Hybern's army in the human lands. When she looks into the cauldron by tracking it, the cauldron gets pissed off and retaliates by going and tricking Elaine away from their camp and stealing Elaine to Hybern's camp. Feyre and Az end up going to get her. Az goes to get her. Yeah, they're adorable. Anyways, I mean, nothing's really there, but it's there later on. I hope Sarah writes a book. Sarah, if you're watching this, please write a book about Az and Elaine because they better be together. That's all I'm saying. So Feyre decides to disguise herself as Ianthe because nobody knows that she's dead yet and she is part of King of Hybern's like army. Her and Az go in there, steal back Elaine. Tamlin ends up helping and defending them and helping them get out of the camp. And then Feyre goes back to the camp and has a long talk with Moor and is like, why don't you love Az? And Moor admits that she's a lesbian to Feyre and that she could never love either Cassian or Az because she likes women. And it took a lot of strength to do that. So go more. All night, 
all the high lords or anyone who could winnow and had the power went to different human homes and told them highburn is coming you need to get to safety and would winnow them to safety or just tell them like get out of here go hide then Feyre decides okay i need to face the Ouroboros because i need the bone carver so she goes to the court of nightmares and she stares herself in the face kind of defeats herself and her own demons that's what the mirror does and then brought the mirror to the bone carver and the bone carver is like okay i'm yours let's go i'll go fight with you the big battle is happening in the mortal land the weaver the carver and braxis they all show up and they start killing a bunch of hybern soldiers and it's amazing the king of hybern retaliates by using the cauldron to start blasting out part of rithian's army it's not going well and then nesta realizes this and saves cassian from one of the blasts and it's kind of like oh they love each other but they're both very stubborn so you don't really know if they love each other and just when it looks like they're gonna lose they see a bunch of ships and they're like who is that and it's lucian who went to go get the fire queen and with the fire queen is the archeron's father and then along with them is the seraphim legion which are friends of Reese's basically, Miriam and Draken, show up, save the day, and then Feyre and Amran race to where the cauldron was blasting and where the King of Hybern are to basically try to nullify it again, try to stop it. Nesta kind of uses her power to draw out the King of Hybern, and her power, by the way, is death. Basically, that's it. That's what she stole from the cauldron. And the King of Hybern's not happy about this. The cauldron's not happy about this. I don't even know if Nesta's happy about this, and so the King of Hybern is drawn away from the cauldron and goes to Nesta. Nesta and Cassian are together, the King of Hybern is basically killing them, and then Nesta's father shows up, who she never really had a great relationship with. The King of Hybern, of course, kills him, but in the moment, he saved them, and then King of Hybern is going to kill Cassian and Nesta next, but Elaine shows up out of nowhere and kills him. So that is what happened to him. Little sweet Elaine murders the King of Hybern. Amran tells Feyre, like, you need to unleash me on the entire Hybern army. Like, I can destroy them. And so Feyre does that. And then they realize the cauldron is part of the world. And if you destroy the cauldron, which is kind of what Feyre did, if the cauldron dies, the world dies along with everyone in it. So then Feyre and Reese both touch the cauldron and kind of go off of each other and put it back together in a way. But little does Feyre know, Reese is slowly dying and giving himself completely to her, all of his power. He's dying. The cauldron is fixed. Feyre turns around. Reese is basically dead. Feyre freaks out. Everyone shows up. She's begging someone to help. And then she realizes, no, she can do this. She can fix him. She can save his life. And she does. And it's amazing. The King of Hybern is dead. They defeated Hybern. Right before they go back to the Night Court, Feyre has a meeting with everyone, all the High Lords, everyone in power, about how they need a new treaty with the humans. There's no more, like, all this terrible stuff going on between fairies and humans. They need a new treaty, they need a new alliance, and they need a new and better world. My opinion on this book, very good. Lots of war. Again, this is my second favorite book in the series probably. I just love Feyre and Reese. like they're forever my favorite couple of, like ever. So even though they're not real, still love them. Next book in the series, A Court of Frost and Starlight. As you can see, very short compared to all the other ones. It's kind of just an interim book, basically just rebuilding. Elaine's better. Nesta's doing terrible. Feyre starts to paint again and her and Reese are great. It all is kind of around the winter solstice, which is kind of a party where you get with family and friends and there's eating and presents and just a good time, kind of like Christmas to us. The winter solstice is also Farah's birthday, and so Reese kind of spoils her with that. Um, as Cass and Reese have an annual snowball fight at the cabin because they're like five years old immature little men but it's fine and then it kind of just ends with Feyre's final present being let's have a child Reese like I'm ready to be a mom I'm ready for you to be a father I'm ready to have a family and Reese's final present to Feyre is to build a huge mansion like on the river to the ocean in Valeris so that's how that ends and I really like this book of course how can I not anything by Sarah J Moss I love the final book in the series so far 
is A Court of Silver Flames. This is in Nesta and Cassian's perspective. It is their love story, as I've been kind of getting at. They are into each other. It starts out with Nesta being completely lost. She um, hates herself, hates that she couldn't save her father, hates the King of Highburn and what they did, um, hates the cauldron, hates a lot of things, and kind of loses herself to booze and boys. And that's how this starts. And Feyre decides, enough is enough. I'm kicking you out of Valeris. You either have to go back to the mortal realm, which Nesta won't because she's now a fairy and she really doesn't have a place there. Or she can move to the House of Wind and work in the library with the Alkalites and earn her keep, basically. And then the other part is she also has to train with Cassian in the Illyrian ste steps or steeps. Nesta retaliates. She kind of puts up a fight. She doesn't want to fight in the Illyrian ste steps or steeps. A bunch of terrible males are staring at her and she doesn't even know how to fight. She doesn't want to. And Cassian realizes this and says, you know what? Never mind. Sorry, I made a mistake. Let's train in the ring at the top of the house of wind up there. Let's train. Nobody has to watch you. And so then Nesta gives in and starts training. Nesta is very wicked and everything, but she also loves reading just like me and everybody watching this. And she loves romance novels, so that's kind of what she spends her time doing. And she makes friends with the house, actually. The House of Wind is like alive. Makes friends with the house because she gives the house book recommendations and things to read. And the house is also a romantic, so she makes friends with the house. And that's kind of like her first friend. There are also steps in the house. There are 10,000 steps. And throughout this whole book, Nesta keeps going up and down them. And like at first, she only makes it to like 101 steps or something like that. She ends up by the end, of course, making all 10,000. And it's kind of what she does every night before she goes to bed or in the morning. Like whenever she needs to, she does it. And she doesn't really miss a day. The first time she tries the steps, it's because she wants booze or she wants boys and she can't get to the city without going down the steps because that's the only way unless of course you can fly or winnow but she can do neither of those things so she keeps going down and up the steps of course at the end she no longer needs booze or boys but after the house nesta's second friend is gwyn who is an alkalite in the library used to be a priestess not a terrible one like anthe but that's her first friend in the library and then her second friend is Emery, who is a shop owner in the Illyrian Steps or Steeps. She is also Illyrian, and those are her two friends. They all kind of whores from the past, and that's kind of why they don't judge each other and why they are such good friends, so I think that's really important. And all throughout this book, Nesta and Cassian are having some really, really rough sex. And I don't know if I can say that, but they are, and it's quite something. Yeah, so that's in here. One of the human queens named Brillian is very upset because she was the most beautiful of the queens and when she went into the cauldron, the cauldron took her beauty and so she's pissed off. She hates Nesta because she blames Nesta because it kind of is Nesta's fault. Nesta stole something from the cauldron. The cauldron was pissed off and punished Brillian and all the other queens. Brillian's kind of against them all, wants to find the dead trove, which are three made items by the cauldron. It's the crown, which can influence anyone, the mask, which can raise the dead, and the harp, which can open doors, space, and time, like open anything, basically. So Brillian, the queen, alliances herself with Baron, the head of the Autumn Court, because Baron hates everyone. I don't know why. And then also this old, like, death lord, Koshi, who is bound to a lake, who's using her. He wants to use the dead trove for himself to be unbound to the lake. So Brillian wants the dead trove to find the cauldron to fix herself and return her youthful beauty. And Koshi is using Brillian to use the dead trove to unleash himself from the lake he is bound to. And Baron is just an evil, awful person, so that's kind of what he's doing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. All the Archeron sisters, they can also find the dead trove, just like how they could find the cauldron and other things that are made, and it is decided that Nesta is the one who needs to find it because Feyre is pregnant. Ah! I'm so excited about that. Gwen is the first to sign up to train with 
Nesta and then Emery shows up and then a bunch of other Alkalites and Cass and Az start to train them to become Valkyrie, which used to be a group of Illyrian women, sort of, just like them, but all women who honestly were tougher and more badass, so go them. And then Nesta goes with Az and Cassian to the middle to find the first item of the dead trove. They go to the bog of Orid, which is in the middle. So Eris had like part of an army or a few soldiers who got taken and they show up in the middle and attack As. So Cassian drops Nesta off and says, don't go anywhere. He goes to save As. But Nesta of course does not listen and she gets up and then she gets taken under a lake by a Kelpie. It's okay because she ends up like bringing the mask to her, summoning the mask because she was made so she can summon an object of the dead trove and then brings all the dead people under the lake alive to kill the Kelpie and she raises from the water like a goddess and it's amazing. Cassian's like, oh my god, I'm in love with her. Then Helene is called to secure the wards on the mask because Nesta can just walk on in so anyone who's made can just walk on in. Feyre doesn't know this yet but she has like a normal fairy birthing canal and the baby has wings so she needs an Illyrian birthing canal otherwise the wings will get stuck and kill both her and the baby. So Reese is very very sad and mad about this and doesn't want anyone to tell Farah, but he asks Helian like you're smart can you please look into this can you please help me and so that is the start of that. Then Nesta creates a whole nother dead trove three swords, one of them I think is a knife, all made by her with death, the power of her in them. So Cassian is the person who tells Nesta this, but it's after a while, after everyone has discussed her behind her back and she freaks out about it and goes running to Amarin and yells at Amarin because Amarin used to be her friend and helper. Then she ends up telling Feyre, hey, just so you know, everyone's talking behind your back as well. And you're actually gonna die and so is your baby. Feyre, of course, is heartbroken. Reese freaks out and is like, Cassian, get Nesta out of here before I murder her because I hate her. So Cassian takes Nesta out of there and they go on like a week-long hike to this lake through the wilderness, completely granola shit going on. Nesta doesn't talk the whole way and when she gets to the lake, she breaks down and cries and tells Cassian all that's been on her heart and why she hates herself and hates everyone. That's kind of the start of her rebirth and for her to be a better person to herself and to others. So it's kind of amazing. After they get back, Nesta finds out the harp. Another object of the dead trove is in the bottom of the prison. So her and Cassian go there to retrieve it. The harp kind of sets her up. Basically, Cassian has to battle Lanthus, who is another death lord, and more of the soldiers who disappeared under Eris's rule show up and they all have to battle, but they end up getting out with the harp. Then they kind of have this ballroom dance party sort of thing and Nesta is a beautiful dancer, amazing, and she makes men like crawl for her. Their alliance with Eris is kind of rocky. They tell her like, hey, I want you to dance with him. I want you to basically have him wrapped around your finger by the end of the night and she does and Cassian is super jealous, and he interferes, which, yes! By the end, Eris is like, I want to marry Nesta, so it worked. Winter Solstice comes around again. Nesta and Cassian realize they're mates. Nesta doesn't know how she feels about it, so she goes, she gets Gwen. They go to Emery's, like, house in the Illyrian Steps. Little does she know, this night is the start of the Blood Rite, so her, Gwen, and Emery get stolen out of their beds by the Illyrians who think, ha, I'm gonna show these Valkyrie chicks, like, we're better than them, we're men. So they get stolen and thrown into the blood rite. It's a week-long thing. There are three groups. Everyone tries to get to this mountain. There's lots of killing and death going on. There's, like, three steps of a warrior. So if you're alive but don't get to the mountain, you have, like, one star. If you're alive and do get to the bottom of that mountain or, like, any part of the mountain, um... You get like two stars, next level of a warrior. And then if you are alive and get to the top and like touch the top of it, you get winnowed out and you basically win. Only Cass, As, and Reese have ever done that. Nesta first goes to Emery because Emery is in trouble. She saves her in a river 
they're okay, they go find Gwyn, and then they start the trek to the top of the mountain. They almost get there, but then Emery's cousin, who's awful, shows up and Ness is like, you guys go, I'm staying here, I'll defend you guys, get to the top, you guys win, I'll stay here. Nesta fights Bellius, Emery's cousin, and ends up beating him, killing him, but throughout this whole thing, there were weapons in the right and like weird shit was going on. And so they knew something was off, they didn't know what, and they find out after um, she kills him, defeats him, the queen shows up, Brilius, with Cassian, finds out she's the one who's been interfering, she has the crown on her head and orders Cassian to kill Nesta. They're mates. Cassian will literally do anything other than kill her. She doesn't realize how strong love is, so screw you, queen, Brilius. So Cassian goes to turn the knife on his own heart. Nesta freaks out and uses her power to obliterate the queen and kill her. From the blood rite, Feyre is giving birth. It is not going well. She is going to die. The baby is going to die. There's nothing they can do. Rhys and Feyre had made a bargain after the third book that if one dies, the other dies. So... Not only were Feyre and the baby gonna die, but so was Rhys. Everyone was gonna die, and it, it was happening. So Nesta went and put on the dead trove and strung the last, like, string of the harp, the 26th string, which was time, and stopped it. She stopped time, and she went up to Feyre. She made basically a bargain with the mother, with the cauldron, and said, I will give it all back. I will give all my power I took from you. If you will just save Feyre, if you will save the baby, if you will save Reese, I will give it all back. And so it happens. And the baby is okay. It's named Nyx. It's so cute. <laughs> and Reese is okay. Feyre's okay. Everybody's okay. Nesta saves them all. Basically, in the end, Nesta and Cassian are mates. Reese and Feyre have a baby. Nesta also said, hey, cauldron or mother, could you please give my sisters and I all Illyrian birthing canals and she tells this to Cassian so one day their sex can lead to a little baby this book is so good completely about mental illness and overcoming it Cassian and Nesta have such dark things about themselves and they fully accept each other and love each other so I love this book too it was so good so that's all I got that's all the series I just gave like a very in-depth summary of each book but there's so much more to each book and it's so much better when you read it they are phenomenal i love them i've read like the whole series front to back probably four times and then mist and fury i've probably read kid you not 20 times i love that book all of sarah j Moss's books are phenomenal all of them i don't know if you guys have seen the fault in our stars i feel like you have but when hazel grace lancaster's like I would literally read your grocery list to her favorite author. That's how I am with Sarah J. Moss. Like, I love her and her writing so much. I would literally read her grocery lists. So, she's amazing. These books are amazing. Highly recommend them. Please comment down below if you liked it or what you'd like to see next. I've read most things. If I haven't read a book and you want me to do a book review, I'll read it because I love reading. Now I'm gonna go and you book nerds are gonna go read the series or you're gonna reread it or you're gonna read a different book because that's just what we like to do. Thank you so much for watching. Comment down below if you liked it. Comment down below what you want next. Bye! My eyes are open.